Welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Derek Asante, and I have a special guest today. I'm excited about this conversation, actually. Um, so this is someone that I go way back with, and, you know, I'm talking like school days. And so a friend of mine, we lost touch, but here we are reconnecting. He's an illustrator slash comic writer. Uh, he's created quite a number of things. Uh, one of them is The Stranger Tales of Oscar Zen. Uh, Anchovy Akiyama, and he's also the co-creator of, uh, I think it's called, what, Everyday Hero uh, Machine Boy. I'm going to learn more about these these books that he's put together. But without further ado, please help me welcome Try. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for having me. And uh, all thanks to the magic of the internet, eh? We reconnected after, <laughs> we said, about right? 16 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, it's been a, it's been a minute. Yeah. It's been a minute. So, so here's the thing. With every episode with a guest, I open with a quote. Okay. Right. I pull a quote that I think would work or, or you know, kind of suit that guess. And the one that I have for you is by Vincent Van Gogh. Right. I mean, pun yeah. intended. Here we yeah. are. Artists, this and yeah. that. Right. So here it goes. I'm going to share it with you. And then I want you to tell me what comes to mind when okay. you hear it. Right. So it goes. If you hear a voice within you say you can't paint, then by all means, paint and that voice will be silenced. What comes to mind when you hear that? I, I think that's a hundred percent truth. <laughs> I think that's hundred percent. I was going to have nothing to add to this Vincent Van Gogh conversation, but but no, when you said right? that, I think that's a hundred percent true. Wow, that's a great quote. Um, I think uh, maybe not just pertaining to art, but maybe all aspects of it. If there's something that, I guess, what it's saying is that if there's something you're afraid of, you should yeah. probably pursue it. Otherwise, it's just that 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 thing that that comes out mass as fear is just going to be there the next day or the next hour or something until you address it that's it that's yeah. it that's it yeah so I, I thought about that because you know when you think about the grind that artists or anybody that's pursuing a dream or or um a passion that they have to go through because you're going to hear those voices often right ah, maybe you're not good enough because you're watching mm -hmm. other people and so you tend to just say, you know what, let me take a step back and not pursue this. Maybe it's not for me. Maybe they're right. And that's that inner voice that we constantly battle, yeah. right? You might be doing a sketch, yeah. right? And then you're like saying, I don't like the way this one's turning out. And you have an image of what it should look yeah. like or what it could look like. And it's really a reference of someone else's yeah. style or something sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, or sometimes <laughs> like false expectations of yeah. yourself. Or, um... Right? Yeah, I, yeah, it's and it. Uh, whew, I feel like I just deal with that every day, uh, and not even just about art. I thought that as you get older, you kind of these voices yeah. quiet down, but you, you just yeah, you, you just yeah. you hear them more, but you can kind of live with them more. I think. It seems yeah, like. yeah, yeah. Great quote. <laughs> yeah, man. So let me let me go mm -hmm. back. I want to know a little bit more about try, mm -hmm. and also for the listeners, just so we can give a bit a bit of a backstory. Um, your family. Mm -hmm. Do you come from a large family or a small family? I was small. I mean, I was I mean, my my mom's still around, my dad's still around, but I was I was mostly raised in a single parent household. It was just me and my dad for uh for the oh, most okay. part. But um I did grow my I was closer with my cousins than most kids are, so they're almost like half a sibling sort of <laughs> a little bit, but, but for it, the most part just it. me and my dad. Okay, were you guys all in the same age range? You and your cousins? Yeah, within two, within two to four years, something like that. Like, oh, nice. uh, big enough to uh, uh, regret it when it came to fights. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, two years is a big difference when it comes to kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you get the worst oh, end of it or no? Yeah, sure, going to the beach, <laughs> yeah, getting drowned. That, not literally, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Do you have um uh, any favorite memories of those days that you can share? Like a, sh a quick story, one that hasn't left you to this day that you're like, you know what, I remember that day. Anything like that? Yeah, well, it's, I guess it's a certain period of my life. Uh, so back when we first, I, I got the Nintendo Entertainment System, the 8-bit. <laughs> uh, and the wow. very first game I got was Metroid. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, yeah, um, yes. Well, anyway, for <laughs> once we got that in the household, every morning my cousin would just come into my room, just sit at the foot of the bed. I'm still sleeping. And he's like, I'm going to just fire this out if you don't mind. 
and he'd play. And, you know, first couple of days, I'd get out, I'm trying to sleep. But after a while, it was just sort of, you kind of wake up groggily, and like, where are you now? What level are you? Okay, and we go back to sleep. So that was kind of nice, actually. Now, I didn't hate, I didn't like it at the time, but now I think back on that moment, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So, where I want to know what you remember. When was the first time you realized, you know what, I'm actually good at this this art thing? And and how was it introduced to you? Like, when did you start to say to yourself, you know what, I like art or I like to draw? Like, okay. what age would you say that started to kind of linger in? Uh, interesting. I think, I mean, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I think every kid probably at some point like to draw. Like, I was like, I, what do you want to do? I want to draw, right? That's, that's probably yeah. universal yeah. as to when... Yeah. Uh, when I thought I was good at it. I think that came when family and other school children said, hey, that's a great drawing of Wolverine uh, <laughs> or something. Right, like right. <laughs> I, I swear everybody drew that <laughs> character. <laughs> it's just a copy of Wolverine. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Depending on how old you are, he has a different costume, the brown one or the right, gold one. Right, right. Um, yeah, uh, so... But it, I think actually the more interesting thing is like, when did I realize I was not good at art? <laughs> I felt, well, yeah, let, let's talk about yeah, that. That's when and that happened quite late. <laughs> like in that, when I was in school with you, um, yeah. there was always this. Oh, yeah, I think so. Because uh, there was always this feeling like, like, yes, yeah, so I guess I had some natural talent. You had some nat natural talent. We all did. That's yeah. why we're in art yeah. school. Um, yeah. But there was always this feeling like, Oh, if I just got my Am act together, enough? I would probably uh, be the best artist uh, in this right. class, in the school, maybe, right. maybe ever. <laughs> and then yeah, one yeah. one year, I decided I, I'm going to get my act together so I can show. And then it turned out, oh, actually, mm -hmm. I'm not as really as good. I really am doing my best here. <laughs> this, is, this is all I got. Really. Like, no, no I mean, it's not it's not the greatest. It's not even the best in this class. <laughs> Uh, and that was that was when I, I think I actually started getting better at art, I guess. It was getting the yeah. ego in check. What, what was your journey like? Because I'm talking about how did you get to Seneca? Okay. Right? Like, what was that journey like? Did, what, did you find it was hard? Did you go to, like, a high school that actually was focused on art so you can actually put together a portfolio? Like, what was that like? Um, so, not in high school. I, I mean, I always drew, I always read comics, but I, I you know... Asian immigrant household. I thought that I would be a programmer or, or something like that. So actually, I think if, if I remember correctly, we were only like required to take art until grade ten, and then after that, I, I didn't mm -hmm. take any art classes at all um, until my guidance counselor suggested I look into animation when it came to um, graduating. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then I still did not do it. I went to computer science and I was really bad at it. I was, I was really, really bad at it. I tried it for three years. I failed like 80% of my classes. And I was actually like, well, that guidance counselor said I should look into this animation thing. And then I think I ended up at Max the Mutt with you, I yes. think, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's where we officially connected first, yes. yes. And then, um, you know, that was for a year or so. Got some fundamentals there. And eventually, I think we both went to Seneca yeah. at the same yeah. time. Yeah. So wait a minute. So when you finished high school, or were you when you were in in high school, you didn't think about doing anything with the arts. You were focused more on like sciences. I wouldn't even say that. I was not focused on science at all. That's why I was so bad at it. <laughs> so why did you go there? Was it like a parents pushing you, th thinking that you need so to ludicrous. go in that direction? Yeah, like the fact that you could make a living in art. It just seemed so. My so here was my thing, right? I'll go to computer science because then I can make video games. I'll be. I won't be. A, I won't be one of the guys that draw things. That's nonsense. I don't know why. Right. I'll be the, the programmer, uh, and you could code because I could. I could, you know, work for a bank after. So that was the plan. But right. my brain is not structured in, in any logical way no. at all. So, <laughs> so I had to fail out of that. I think I'm starting to see wow. my own uh, my own uh, flaws in this conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fail, Your reflective moments. Right <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. So now, how did you end up at Max? Max, uh, how did you end up okay, there? So, 
computer programming. Oh, now I remember. Oh, I should get into animation. What do you think of animation? I think of Sheridan. Yeah. Uh, so I applied to Sheridan, and I, I had no portfolio. Really, I don't know what a portfolio is. I think I tried dry submitting. They had a list of what you should. But I didn't take any yeah. art classes since grade ten. Um, I think my mimicry, right. like I still kept. I was still like copying Jim Lee. X-Men comics. So right. the mimicry yeah, was yeah. there's some like maybe hand eye coordination there, but in terms of drawing fundamentals, not really, right? So I I, mm. I did not get into art fundamentals. <laughs> I, I think everybody gets into <laughs> art fundamentals that's that shared it. I, I somehow did not. Maybe I didn't get in right? there. I'll tell you my story okay, after. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, what was your I mean, tell me now. What was your what was your well, so so I put together a portfolio last minute. Um, I had a, a great art school teacher at uh, in high yeah. school. So she says, you know what? She spent hours with me after school just to help me, you know, get use a facility and whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. She even got me live models. And I, at this point, I've never seen a live model yeah. before. Right. So I was like, oh, what do I do with this person? I'm supposed to draw them. <clears throat> it was horrible. But I put something together that that same checklist that they had. Right. For Sheridan. So I put it together. I had some paintings, everything. I get over there. Now, mind you, I'm living in Toronto. So for me to come out to Brampton at the time was like a trip. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So <laughs> I had to schedule a ride, all of that. It was brutal. So I get there. A couple of hours, some lady comes by and says, okay, uh, you're next. I go into this room. They look at my work. Nobody says a word to me. They just kind of look at it. And then they give me back my portfolio. And I'm like, okay, that's it. Now, mind you, I felt confident mm -hmm. that I had some decent pieces that should have got me at least in the mm -hmm. door, right? Because I'm looking at everybody else in the same space, and I'm thinking, she's definitely not getting in. She's uh -huh. not getting in. She's not getting in, right? But guess what? They all got in. They all got in, right? So I'm looking. I'm like, what is going on? Of course, when I get to Max, <clears throat> now, I'll tell you that little story after, but I get to Max, and I find out some of those people that did get in, they had family members um, that were connected. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. The politics continue in this realm too. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so that's what I yeah. learned. <laughs> right. Yeah. But yeah, so that's that's how it happened with me. I was like, yeah, I didn't get into there. And I was like, you know what? It worked out for me because then I'm scrambling. I didn't want to take another year off because I had already taken a year yeah. off um prior to after that. So that's when I came across Max. And I was like, I don't know if I can afford mm. this. So I don't know if anybody knew this, but I paid like a fraction of the fee to get in. And then while I was there, I brokered a deal where I would work as the person that sets up the room. I remember that. And clean. I remember doing all of that time doing stuff. Yeah. And that's how I was paying my that's tuition. Amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I still owed the money after the year, yeah. but I said, listen, I can't pay you guys. And I knew I wasn't going to be in yeah. trouble because they were private. Yeah, yeah. So they couldn't necessarily, you know, kind of take me to court or anything yeah. like that. So that's how I was able to get away with it. Yeah. But I owed them like an extra like five grand or something. Like, I don't have yeah. it, man. I'm, I'm done. Fine. Don't so. worry about it. It's, 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 all, it's all good. It's fine. Right? And they closed down, I think. They changed their name you know, or something so like I that. I more to say. I ended up teaching there a couple of years ago. What? No way! <laughs> there we have this, Max. Yeah, this is... The, everything is kind of coming full circle here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's interesting. I remember... Um, remember Ed? Yes. Yeah, so I didn't... Uh, yes. I didn't... Meet, and this is all going deep in the weeds. Do we even... Do you read listeners even want to hear all the stuff? Or... <laughs> Hey, let's go for no, it, man. Anyway, let's go. Ed, Ed was our life drawing teacher. And um, yes, actually, so good sort of carrying on with my tradition. I was actually quite a bad arts. Oh, now I remember. <laughs> now I remember. I did, was at Maxim Mutt not once, but twice. I think you, wow. you were not around for my first uh, fall from grace. <laughs> well, I mean, so I went. Okay, so here's the story. I went to U of T for programming. I sucked at it. So I said, forget it. I'm going to go into animation. So Seneca. No, uh, Sheridan. Failed, didn't get onto mm -hmm. our fundamentals. But I got into Max the Mutt. But then I failed. Right. <laughs> I failed that first year, too. Because I was... Oh, did you? Because yeah, I was just... Oh, so you were there before yeah, I came. Sort of. So that was my first, then I wow. went back to computer science. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was like, I was like because I was like, well, if I suck at this at this uh, art thing, maybe maybe it was maybe I am a programmer at heart. Maybe the first time I just was really not, not focused enough. Anyways, I failed that again. Then went back to uh, Max and Mutt and uh, was not quite wow. as bad, but still not great. Yeah, and that's when I met you. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So you had already been there before. Yes, I think for, for that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It took me a long time to uh, sell in. To uh, yeah, become an adult. We'll say. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know what it was. Yeah, you seemed like really focused. Like you were, you were, you know, finding ways to pay for tuition. You were, um, you were, uh, you know, whatever. Like you're, you're the guy had there ahead of time. Putting up chairs because that's what you needed to do to pave your way. I going back to Ed, our life drawing teacher. I didn't get a chance to meet him, but I think I remembered uh, some of my students said, "Oh yeah, try." Turns out he was one of your your students back then, and he's like, "Try, tries here. That that kid made it. He like it is just." <laughs> I don't know. I was like, well, I guess I don't blame him because knowing me back then, I, I must, my head was in the clouds. I just was not, okay. I wasn't a bad kid. I just didn't know what I was right. doing, really. Just every day was a different, different thing with me. So, yeah. 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 Man. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so we make it out of Max. We make it to Seneca. Yeah. Then we, we get through those years, those three years. Yeah. What did you end up doing right after that? Right after Seneca. I had a brief stint where I worked. Ah, so I, right before I graduated Seneca, the last couple of months, I was also mm-hmm. working. Uh, I got a job at an LG doing some graphic design, like really small stuff, um, yeah. marketing uh, stuff. Uh, and they offered me a job, and that was seemed to be something I was sort of good at. That was kind of nice. So they offered me a salary that was um, like, oh, this would be maybe more than what I would get in animation. So. Oh, I was wow. really, I mean, I was really tempted, right? Because after we're, after going to art school, you don't know whether you're going to get a job yeah. at all. And how I have something yeah. kind of related. Uh, and I was really close to taking it, but I had a really good manager at uh, a couple of really good managers at LG where uh, one of them mm. said that, listen, I'm going to tell you two things. One is that I want you to take this job. I'm telling you that as a, as a, as a, employee of LG. <laughs> now, I'm right, gonna, right. Tell, don't tell you as a friend now, and I don't think you should take this job. I think you should go for the thing mm. that you studied for and, and do that instead. So I think without uh, that talk, I may not have gone down this route at all. So I went, really? yeah, I went back to animation uh, and got, got a, a couple of gigs uh, to, you know. Where in the city? Or? Yeah, I was at Kuwait, Canada. That was my first one okay. with uh, some other alumni. Some said were there. Dewey, uh, yeah, yes. Aaron McLean, I think, was there. Yeah, uh, I, I remember. Yeah. Aaron, yeah, and then I went to from there. I went to uh, Core Digital Pictures. Both these companies are no okay. longer around, but I also no, no. The cool thing was that it seemed like school never quite ended because you just keep on seeing the same guys. Like, uh, yeah, like Kiko was there, and like so many, like, yeah, wow. yeah. And then uh, Kiko and I both went to um, a video game company in Toronto called uh, Cappy Games. And okay. I was there for quite a while, he was there for even longer. And then, what were you doing there? Well, it was a what small kind of video game company, so you kind of did everything kind of art related. So, a lot of drawing, uh, because we did a lot of 2D mm. games, uh, we, we dabbled some 3D stuff. Um, you kind of had to be a, a generalist. Uh, with right. that yeah and then wow. finally the last one was uh, in animation was in uh, I made it to Nelvana no, no sorry Chorus Chorus Entertainment oh yeah okay okay they're they're pretty big I don't are, are they still around yeah or? they are I mean my animation knowledge just because I know they're yeah, big I think they're I would imagine they must be one of the bigger Toronto players yeah in the scene yeah. and um, yeah I, and then that was sort of my last animation gig before I decided to take a it meant to take a one year hiatus from it. Yeah. <laughs> and then it, it never so, went back, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm curious. So when you're in these studios and you're working with yeah. them, whether it's video game or animation, what's the environment like? They're really different. Is it like, yeah. Everyone is different. There's almost no, at wow. least in my experience. Um, mm. So the first one I 
I uh, went to was Koei Canada. It was a Japanese video game company. And so the culture was Japanese. It was very structured. At least they were back then. I don't know if things are that like that now. Okay. But the desks are arranged by seniority. So you know oh. how senior somebody is, the further they are they down they are down <laughs> this aisle of desks. Wow. Yeah, and, and um everything was you had to take your breaks at a, at the exact same you had to take your same your breaks at the same time as uh not not literally because it's a different time zone, but if employees in Japan took their breaks at 12 p.m. Everybody in North oh. America had to break take their breaks at 12 p.m. Yeah. Really? So it was very structured, super duper structured. Uh uh yet how did you find that though? Well, I mean, that was my first job, and it was only with a short contract, <laughs> so I was just happy to to get paid. Be working. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was and there was I saw um, there was good and bad parts to that actually because one it, th that structure is not great for me because I'm a little bit chaotic, but it was yeah. cool that they did. It didn't seem like they treated their employees as disposable, like mm. it was. Um, there was like some, it seemed like they were trying to invest in like their employee growth, employees growth and stuff like that. Or even if somebody was not performing well, they would say, oh, maybe they're in the wrong position. That's what if we try something like that. Oh. Um, whereas I think in the other companies, it's sort of, you're, you sort of come in guns blazing and it's a bit of a free for all, but it's also, oh. you're, you're kind of on your own a little bit, I guess. Okay, so so are you being assigned a task and you just have a deadline and you got to meet it and you're doing this all by yourself and then maybe you check in with, with a supervisor or somebody and then they kind of see if you're going in the right direction? Is that yeah, it's, especially is with that... animation? Like if they're, if they're hiring you mm. as a as a let's say a, a designer, a character designer, we'll say like right. you you better you better know how to character design from day one because there's like, you know, the style and stuff will be massage. You'll have an art right. director to help you get in the thing. But if they're not going to hold your hands to teach you the fundamentals of that, wow. because it's the, everything's contract based. I guess that's, this is the difference in animation. Everything's contract yeah. based and video games tend to be more right. permanent. So there's just not mm. that time to like, you're going to teach somebody four months to teach them a skill, but they're only on a nine month contract. You know, so right. better just right. to hire somebody that really knows the stuff. Wow. Yeah. So you've you've been bouncing around quite a bit. Oh so yeah. When <laughs> when you finally left that last animation gig, what went through your mind for you to say, you know what, I'm actually not gonna go back to that. Ah uh, yeah. Uh, I thought you know what I thought like maybe this is it for me. <laughs> like maybe I will mm. try to do something else because it was. I don't know why. It's kind of weird. I mean, I, maybe, I, maybe you have some insight on this. Um, when you first get into art, you want to be, there's reasons for it that are not, you want to be practical. You would not ever get into art, I don't think, right? You might do, right. do something else. But along the way, yeah. it's like, it, it became sort of like uh, getting stability, getting, uh, it's not even about communication or telling stories or even just showing something yeah. of yourself. It's just like, oh man, I, you know, I, I, I need that next gig, or maybe this one is a, they may give me a full time job and all oh, benefits, that's amazing. And, um, right. And I think I pursued that. I got lost in the pursuit of that. And, and mm. I was not good at it. Like, if I was good at mm. being that guy, like maybe I was like, that's, that'd be its own reward too. But I was not right. good at being the, the company guy. Right. So I was like, right. maybe I should just do something else. Like maybe this is just something that's not the best fit for me. So, um, I just decided to uh, take a break from this like constant looking for work and hoping I'll get a, a yeah. job somewhere else. And I thought I would just try doing something like purely creative for, for however long EI lasted. And and then mm. after that was done, I'll be I'll go back and I'll I'll find something else again. Figure it yeah. Out. Yeah. And, uh, so <clears throat> during during that period, I'm curious: is that when Tamago? House is it Tomago or Tomago? Oh, I don't House. know. It's kind of a made-up word. Let's say Tomago. <laughs> <laughs> tomato, like, tomato. Yeah. Is that is that what's yeah, happening? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, is that when that kind of came into mind, or or oh, that no. came much so that, later? That's new. Well, sort of. I had this like 
So tamago is like, you know, it's tomato. But then also the Japanese yeah. word for egg is tamago, right? So he's, uh, a, he's a tomato. That's why the play on with the character yeah, inside, inside the show. <laughs> which I feel like is just all of us. Like we're just pretending to be something we're not. <laughs> and, that is awesome. and if you look at that character's yes. eyes, he always got he's always got bags it's because he's nervous about being found out. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> is that you secretly? Probably. <laughs> is that what I mean, really just us, right? So yeah. It's true. Anyways, that was a new oh, thing. That, that, that was, I put up that website just in January for I don't know, I got really oh, okay. got really obsessed with uh, the idea of, of making uh something for myself, I guess. Mm-hmm. And what what was that? I guess is that like a publishing house for you? Or it's literally nothing. It's just an, um, okay. So the I I guess the long story is, of it is this: is that after I was a studio artist, I decided to do something for mm -hmm. myself, and I, I did a comic called "The Strange Tales of Oscar Zahn," and I thought it'd just be like a right. twenty-page comic. Maybe I'd self-publish it, try to go to conventions, settle a, a little bit, and then go back to work. But uh, it mm -hmm. developed a following organically, and that lure turn, lure turned into like, oh, I'm actually getting uh, some money like coming in. Not to, I could cover my expenses, and that's it, right? right? But it's like, oh, I could either tighten my belt and just do this one thing that I really like doing, and like live yeah. like super poor. Like I was basically after paying all my bills, I had nothing to live on. But my bills are taken care of. Pain. And I'm happy yeah. <laughs> for now. Um, so anyways, <laughs> I just, I was doing that. That turned into like another opportunity for Story Everyday Hero Machine Boy, which turned into another another opportunity for Anchovy Akiyama, which turns into some other stuff like I did with Lego. Wow. And that's all great. But then I was started thinking like this, like end of last year, it was like, like, I guess I'm lucky enough now that I've, I'm still new to the industry. I'm still a new storyteller. People, people don't know mm. me, but I'm able to yeah. work this way. But uh, something's been lost along the way. Like now, if I want to tell a story, it's through these really official channels, and I'm happy for them because they provide my way of life. Mm. And the, the publishers I work with have been really great. But I was kind of missing this thing. Like, what if I just want to write something? Um, can I just put it out right. there? And I didn't want to be part of a social media network. Um, mm. just one is like an old school blog that if people want to follow yeah. me well here I am yeah. and um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I guess Tamago House is like whatever that's not officially it. like I'm working with somebody else it's just a catch off for everything I do right wow so in order which book came first you mentioned it I just want to make sure I, I, I follow uh, The Strange you. Tales of Oscar Zog came out first <clears throat> as a web comic so you can actually yeah so I, yes, I remember yeah. that. I think you had um, pages that you were yeah. showing um, and you were posting them. So I'm curious, how long did that take you? And did you do everything by yourself on uh, that one? Uh, I did have some help um, here and there when I was just overwhelmed with, with the coloring. Um, yes. But mostly it's by myself. And for how long? Wow. So I worked on it for, uh, there's actually quite a bit of content. So uh, I worked on Oscar Zahn, I think, for three or four years. But that first page of Oz goes on took me one year to do. <laughs> wow, that sounds like try. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the only thing. But I was I started that while I was I, I was working in animation, so it was like a side project. Right, but, so you, no time. Yeah. Well, uh, time is definitely an issue. One I didn't. One so the comic medium and the animation medium on the surface they're they're really similar, but under dig underneath mm. they had, they're completely opposite they're completely different they couldn't be more different and i was trying to take wow. new, take what i knew from animation and put in the comics into and it could not it. progress mm. any further because they're, they're different mediums no yeah. um yeah yeah wow wow it, it no I, I the reason why i'm curious about that because i saw you know you'd post here and there and then i would okay yeah. is it coming is it finished and then i'm realizing the timeline but that i want to mm -hmm. hear exactly how long it took you because i also remember how how you took your time to do did i really at seneca i didn't know that <laughs> oh my I God. didn't know that about me. try you listen you irked me so yeah. much because it, it because i knew how good you were right so 
I'm looking at you. I'm like, try. Have you started? You're like, no, I will. And you just never start. And you always played for the deadline. <laughs> I did. You're right. You're, you are so right. I was such a. I was such a. Bastard. Try would wait, and just do it in the last minute. I'm like, what happened? Ah, you know, you know. Yeah. And like, <laughs> I think. Yeah. So I. Yeah. I. I almost flunked out of Seneca too. <laughs> Well, that's well, that's why. Going back to what I was saying, like I, I was in danger. I had a talk with, uh, I think Larry DeFlorio, the, uh, the yes, yes, the, Larry, the, yeah, um, the head of animation at the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think he passed away, unfortunately. But no I th- way. Yeah, I think so. Don't quote me on that. Oh, I man. heard about that. Okay. But um, yeah, he had a talk with me. He's like, he's like, because he's like, my, he's like, my grades are all over the place. Like, I got an A in life drawing, but I was failing layout. And was, yeah, you know, yeah. just like, like, it's like, it's like, you have to make up your mind what you want to do. Like, you know, yeah. so, um, yeah, I, as was another instance where I needed that talk too. And that's when I said, okay, you know what? I, I, I'm a, at that point I was approaching 30. Like I was like my late twenties now, yeah. like if I'm not going to, if yeah. I'm not going to take this seriously, I should just, I don't know. I was working as a waiter part-time. Like maybe I should just be a good waiter or something. And, but <laughs> I wanted to try one more time. <laughs> Uh, wow! And, so you, you, yeah. you seem like you've been at these crossroads quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I don't know what it was. Lack of focus. Uh, I was very easily distracted or um, discouraged. You know, I don't know. Like, yeah. you know, I don't know if you've ever felt that yeah. way as a young man. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But not as frequent as you, though. Yeah. You you've had too many of those moments, and I was like, why is he doing this? Yeah. Why is he just not doing what he's supposed to do? And he, it comes easy. At least that's what it, it looked like for me. I thought it came easy for you. Mm. And so maybe that's why you took your time to do it. So for me, from the outside looking on, I was just like, he can easily do this in like two mm. days. But why does he wait until the last yeah. minute? And you're pulling out your yeah. hair, sleeping over yeah. when you didn't have to sleep right. over. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm glad I'm talking to you about this because talking like hearing you tell these stories about me makes me feel like I should be more patient with younger people. Cause I, what you're saying, to me, even though you were probably younger than me, telling me this, stuff, yeah, I was, I was like, yeah, I, uh, cause I, I th- I'm, yeah, I sometimes I like, oh, these these younger artists, you know, why can't they just, you know, they're so talented, why can't they just, yeah, you know, get their act together? Because the world is their oysters, they could just. Get their act together. You know, they could just do so much. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Yeah. Man. So so after that first book, which one was next? Is it Machine Boy? Uh, that led into Everyday Hair Machine Boy, which I co-created with my studio. At the time, uh, we, I was studio mates with uh, uh, Irma Knievel, a close friend of mine. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that was just... so. Was it? Were you both creating the characters and doing the illustrations in that, or it was really was it... organic at first because we could both write and draw and color. So I mean, it, well, the way it worked out was, I, what I, I thought it would be like, she would focus more on the writing and I would focus more on the art. Mm. But if we got stuck, we would just sort of pass it back and forth because we're sitting like right across from each other. It was really possible oh, to nice. be that organic with things, and right. um, yeah, that was just. Like so far, when I'm now I'm talking about this stuff, most of this stuff is not planned. Like I never planned to pitch any stories or anything. Mm. Um, I would just make something and then put it out there, and then things have a have a habit of coming together Take it. in ways that uh, before it never came together for me when I was chasing right. a certain specific result. That makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. And how long did that one take now? Because now you're doing with another oh, person. Yeah. <laughs> So time time is of essence for them, and it might not be for you. So, no, how do you... <laughs> so, I, so I'm a different man now, Derek. Now time is right. Is, I I am now the guy that is on. What's the deadline? I will I will hit it, even if it's optional. I'm yeah. That's the deadline I'm hitting. Stick I, to know, it, even if it's bad for my health or physical. <laughs> like I'm gonna make yeah. a schedule every day in the morning. I write down a schedule of how the day is gonna go. It never goes according to plan. Nice. But I try to tame the chaos because like, I see nice. how destructive it is for me, and and yeah. I don't want to yeah. indulge in that anymore. As for how long yeah. that uh, process took, it was the beginning because I was like, okay, there's two people. We're both pretty good at what we do. Uh, it's mm-hmm. it's gonna be. 
probably half the time. And in a way, it sort of was at first. Things came about really quickly. We we would submit things to editors. They would have a guys. We have no notes for you. This is working. This is great. Whatever's happening here is going good. Mm. Until you hit the the middle of the story, and then you start disagreeing on things. <laughs> And then uh, everything. Then you realize, like, oh, there's. It's like a double-edged sword. I can't just do whatever I want, um, right. and that really ground to a halt. So, uh, working with a partner is uh, is its own thing. There's beast. Yeah. There's definitely huge advantages, but there's definitely new skills you got to learn. Just interpersonal communication yeah. skills. Like, took us, uh, yeah. me and Irma, our, our close friends. But we never had to be that way. Uh, in a like, you know, like we're friends. Like, if, if she's yeah. annoying me, like, yeah. I'm gonna talk to you another time. Right? But now you right. gotta deal right. with each other. These are like, you know, we gotta work exactly. this out. And um, that took some time to to figure out, even just how to speak to each other in a way. Because artists are very yeah. sensitive. Like, you could yep. you could say, "Hey, are you sure that <laughs> color hair should be blue?" And then it turns out like they just just shattered their like they they spent so long right. just coming up with that blue color. Yeah, uh, yeah. and then it's, you know it's like a month of uh month of tears and, and crying on both people wow. parts. Wow. Yeah. So but was it as long as the first book? Well, so Oscar Zahn was a web comic. So that was done piecemeal. Like I was making four pages putting it online, drive four pages putting go. on online. So mm -hmm. that kind of it's a bit of a chaotic story. There's a certain charm to it, but uh it, it grew with the audience. So it was kind of neat. With books, you kind of have nice. to finish it and then yeah. put it out there. So it's a little hard to say because I was working on both projects mm. at the same time too. Oh, wow. Um, I would, I guess I would say it, would take, it took longer overall than the first book mm. because then you also have to, there's all the other stuff about putting out a book that's not making the book, like right. publishing schedules right. and design yeah. and yeah formatting yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. print and all yeah. That. yeah yeah wow what what would you say the age range is for this book the machine boy middle grade i would say i think actually that's we didn't set out okay. to make a middle grade book but my publisher said this is a middle grade book which i barely i think that's what grade five to eight something like that okay. uh, but right. what we set out right. to do was something more like i'd like to think all ages like the way like studio ghibli it's like it's for kids, yeah. but you know, it's right. not pandering to them. It, and it's also at the, you know, it, if if you're older, I think there's something there that hopefully you can connect with and, and draw from as well. Yeah, yeah. Now the reason I'm asking because I'm I'm gonna pick up your, all your books oh, by the way, you. just just putting it out there because I need a copy of each one right. of them. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> um, and I, my kids are into my daughter, especially she's getting into comics, right? And so I figure, hey, why not give her books of someone that I actually know, right? Yeah. And I'm doing I'm doing two things at the same time, supporting you. Oh, and thank you. Yeah, and I would. I mean, quality stuff, right? I, I think everyday so, hero machine boy. I, I mean, I have an extra copy. I just. Are you? Are you? No, no. I'm gonna pay oh, for okay. it. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> 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 Trust me, I know the I know the grind and I know okay. the, the hustle. So I have to support okay. it. I can't I can't take anything okay. for free, especially when it's an, another thank, artist. So thank you. Uh, allow me to do that thank for you. you. As much as you want to give it to me, I want to pay for thank it. You. Um, yeah. Now, how do you balance? So you're technically working on your own right now, or is it like contract that you're taking on? I'm working on my own, so I, I have no uh, I have publishers. I mean, you, you might say I have clients. I mean, I did, that's a weird way to think of things, but uh, I don't have, um, there's no There's no boss. Uh, but I have, right. like, you know, obligations that I, I, I promise to hit. Yeah. Certain timelines. Yeah, exactly. And dates yeah. And, yeah. Okay, that works. Now, how do you find that? I mean, you've been in the industry where you're working for somebody for so many yeah. years. And now you're doing this thing solo with some, you know, agreements here yeah. and, and whatnot. How's what's how would you describe the difference? Because I'm I'm asking this question because I'm thinking about entrepreneurs, because that's what you are, okay. right? Um, and how do you sustain yourself in this realm that you're now navigating? You know, by yourself and 
you're doing all this work. How do you sustain yourself? What are some of the tips that you can give somebody who's listening to this and thinking about stepping out on their own and leaving the big corporation? Yeah. Um, well, hmm. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back to <laughs> knock on wood. You never know. Right. Like, but based yeah. on how I feel about things now, I think, um, I don't, it'd be very difficult for me to give up being my own boss. I, I love collaborating. I love having, partners um but uh the freedom and accountability that i have being my mm. own boss is is it's once i've tasted that i can't i can't go back to it yeah. um yeah. as to how how to keep yourself going so it's still an ongoing um it's still an ongoing process for me uh mm. i haven't had problems keeping myself going because you you basically well I basically have to build myself up from you know right okay this is my salary to like well my salary yeah. is zero <laughs> my salary is yeah. zero and I've got to fight for every this is a bit dramatic yeah. but you know like you, you if you're a farmer if you you're, if you're slowly planting your your crops if you don't harvest them yeah. like why did you what are you doing like why did like what yeah. so it's like I'm it's it's I'm a lot more um appreciative of the opportunities I have now because I mm. also have the opportunity to, to not take them. Right. I, yeah. if I really didn't want to do yeah. them. I, I could have just not taken them. And if I, if I took them, yeah. it must be at some level, I, I want to do it. Um, yeah. The, the tricky thing that I'm learning now is that uh, I can't say yes to everything. Cause that's his own. Sometimes that's even more. I mean, you're nodding like you know, like you just want to say yes to every single <laughs> cool thing that comes along. And then when you're young, it's like, well, that's easy. I just work myself to the bone. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, like, right. I, I, I have my lazy years, as you know. You know, now I'm gonna be work, this workaholic years, but I'm past that yeah. now too. It's like this, I'm just gonna burn yeah. myself out like this. Yeah. Um, so now it's trying to figure out this balance where, okay, I I love what I do, but this is. This is not who all who I am. Like you know, if I, if I had a heart yeah. attack tomorrow, knock on wood, I don't. I won't look back and say, "Oh, the last ten years was the best use of my time." You know, I, yeah, right. I want to like right. you know do exactly. normal human things, have friendships, yeah. and meet people. Like a lot of, I hadn't caught up with a lot of friends. I mean, you, yeah. for instance, I didn't know what, what was yeah. anything was happening because I was making these funny books. Um, and going forward, I want to find that that. Uh, more sustainable balance, I think. Yeah. Now, anchovy. Yeah. Why that name? <laughs> That's so okay. So that was also another like a uh, brainchild of me and uh, Irma, my studio mate at the time, okay. and we didn't have it. Just there's no plans for anything right so especially when you have like a wacky partner you, you don't yeah. we don't we're not like doing market research on like what books will sell we don't even really know it's just like you're just trying to like write things to make the other person laugh right because right. you can get that immediate feedback so we i don't know what it was it was just like one person said, hey, you know what we should do after machine we should do like this this um this detective story, you know, kind of like a, uh, kind of like Shades of Inspector Gadget, kind of like, um, yeah. uh, Lupin, like the, that other uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then the other person will say, "Yeah, and we should name everybody after food." And then, <laughs> and then you're like, "Yeah, let's do it." Like you know, there's like there's no, like, no, this is stupid. Like, why would you do? It? Like it was just like it's just more ridiculousness. Uh, or some yeah, like yeah, some yeah. characters have been like, "Yeah, really, this and this and this and like." Then let's make them into a chicken. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so, so there, there is no real reason why, other than it was, it was fun. Well, you know what? No, let me change that. So it's funny, but as you start telling the story, you realize actually yeah. having that kind of like you have a character named anchovy. Everybody's named after a cake, a wine, a type of vegetable. Right. I was like, oh, there's actually story <laughs> advantages to this because um, it's set in a pretty mundane world. You know, everybody drives cars, mm -hmm. they've got normal jobs. But just the the art style is cartoony, but the fact that they don't have these, they kind of sound like normal names, but they're not. 
mm, kind of makes it yeah it gives you room to play with what's what you can what do can happen. Yeah, exactly yeah yeah without yeah. Uh, without explicitly making it too cartoony i guess yeah. right right wow so <laughs> I couldn't get past the name. I was like, Antrovi, why this name? I have to ask him. That's I, why I, I have such a hard time explaining. Like, people ask me what this is about. I'm like, well, you know, it's kind of like a, a murder mystery, like Hardy Boys. That are and then, and then the last part, you always forget. Oh, and everybody's named after food. Because if I don't say that, I feel like right. I'm not being honest with what it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, I don't know. <laughs> was, was there a favorite part for you in that process of creating this book? Um... No, this one was really difficult. This was the hardest book to do. Really? Uh, yeah. Why? Um, well, so like I said, this was like a comic that was an idea between me and Irma. But mm -hmm. uh, the workload just got too too much for, for her. So uh, she had to step out of the project. And then I was sort of left with a choice like, do I, do I, this is really early. Well, like we had just, we had started enough that now it was, is a real thing. Like we, I can make it and put out there. I can put on, you know, we get, it's like a real publishing thing. Um, right. But what I do now, because I thought it'd be like, you know, a two man team or two person team. Right. And now it's just right. one. I was off. We were both overworked. She, I understood mm. she had to step away. Um, yeah. But going back to like, you say yes to everything. It's like, well, I can't take this on. <laughs> but i want to right. do it so i will yeah, say yeah. yes i'll do it and figure it out so uh it was also um there's a murder mystery that i didn't know the ending of i didn't know the, the so i was like as i was writing it mm. i i had to almost like live this character's like journey a little bit wow uh, so wow. It, it was very stressful like i i hope the story i think it's going the right ways but I don't know until I get to the next chapter, which I have to put out for the readers right. to read. Uh, is everything's hoping okay, okay? I just hope I can stick this landing. So, yeah. Wow. What's What's your writing process? Because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that you were going to get into this much writing. Like, I mean, obviously, we were all doing yeah. art, right? But how did you get into that and say, you know what? I'm going to just start telling stories and then maybe put a picture to it afterwards or whatever. Yeah. But is it the character comes first sometimes, or is it the story comes before the character? Uh, huh. Does the character come like for first anchovy. or does the story? Yeah. Okay. So I guess first thing, uh, hmm, it, it's, it's pretty jumbled. Uh, I think first mm. thing is, maybe genre comes first. It's like, what do I want to spend the next couple of years of my life working on? Like without, uh, like all things I have a, a cool idea, yeah. but I don't really want to draw this car accident right. <laughs> or something like, right. you know, like, I, like certain <laughs> right. things like, I, right. it's a cool idea if somebody else told the story, but I, I don't yeah. have the voice or stomach for, for some of this stuff. Uh, so right. some of it is genre and just like what I, what I think would be a great experience for me to, to spend my time on. Mm. And then after that, it's, um, you know what? I think it's a question come at, at some point, like sometimes mm. the character is there. Sometimes the world, it's the world there, but usually it comes down to what's the question here that I'm interested in. Like, what's the question I'm asking that I want to find out the answer to, mm. um, yeah, I don't know if that's too Never, vague for you. No, no, no. That, yeah. that makes sense to me because because I didn't think that you were thinking of it that way. Because sometimes I hear people talk about the character came first. Maybe I had this idea of a character that looks like this. And then they put a story onto it. Or they come up with a story. Yeah. And then the character is born from that. But the fact that you're saying the question comes first, that makes more sense. Because I think that fuels the fire of yeah. continuing more than just a character and a story. Yeah, like there's bits as you ask, right. as you, because you can, I don't know if you can actually, I don't know if you can say, ask that question first, because it's, but, but as I'm drawing the character, as I'm starting to write these like mm -hmm. first couple paragraphs of an outline, like bits and pieces are forming, like they're not connecting yeah. yet. But, um, mm -hmm. but if I could get far enough along, there's usually an, an idea that I'm interested in. And um, right. once I get that idea, 
then it kind of grounds everything else. Is then I can make like, oh, okay, then you know maybe the character is more like this. Maybe the world's more like this. Maybe the the opening scene is more like this. But before that, it's really like you're just is is you're just lost. It's like a free fall. You're like I I don't know. I'm right. not really sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think creativity is kind of like that in general, right? Like it's like yeah. it's going back to your yeah. opening thing about um, fear. Are you afraid to paint? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I think if you're in free fall and you're scared, you might be on on the right path. Because if you know exactly yeah, well, yeah. well, first I come up with the inciting incident, and then I come up with the characters. Stuff. Well, then it's just kind of writing by numbers, and and you don't right. Like, where's the excitement? Right. Of that? Exactly, yeah. man. So how long do you stay in that writing space before, or is it simultaneous with the idea of sketching out something while the story is still being flushed out? Right, the question is still being answered, and and whatnot. Like, how long do you stay in that? process before you say you know what i think i have a first page or even a cover art that might inspire something uh, else it changes all the time um every year mm. it's different and also changes according to the job like some jobs i'm only writing so i don't i don't do any drawing oh, or if okay. i do it's much later on because if i need to do some designs to help whatever artist or some and some projects right. i only draw i don't i don't write uh, but ideally i would like to draw and write my own thing and in that case, I find that the in the beginning, I would write very little. With Oscar Zahn, I wrote nothing. Mm. I just drew the first page. Here's the scene, here's the world, and here's the character. And then I just sort of went from there and figured it out. Uh, it worked for me okay. for a while. But as I do this longer, yeah. I find myself writing more, thinking more about structure, right. thinking more a little bit more about themes. Um, partly, it's because... Um, of time like what if you have I've drawn all this mm -hmm. stuff uh and i want to change things it's very wasteful <laughs> wasteful to throw yeah, all that stuff yeah. out actually with machine yeah, so here's yeah. with machine boy because the and i were primarily artists first we're like you know we're not gonna write scripts that's that's for people that aren't visual like us <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, we like to redraw and yeah, redraw so we, we, <laughs> drew out the first 40 percent of the comic in like rough form <sighs> And, the, and yeah. it was the best. Like, it worked perfectly. Like, the editors thought it was great. We thought it was great until we hit a problem. And then we couldn't get any further because, you know, it was it was kind of like the train's coming and you're just laying the tracks yeah. right beforehand. So right, since right, then, right. I realized, okay, no, writing, I'm trying to... Writing is almost like building the... The foundation. foundation the scaffolding of the house yeah. and yeah if something's not quite right i can easily take it down right right wow so we are nearing the end right now i have a small segment okay. and this is just to shake things up a little bit and i'm gonna ask you a silly question and you gotta pick one of the two options okay. all right of the answers here so here it goes would you rather lose your passport or your smartphone <laughs> uh smartphone it, it'd be it'd be better for talk me. to me about it, it why would, it would mean it'd be good for me <laughs> i mean it'd be like <laughs> uh, smartphone has gone and until i replace it those those weeks or days or months probably be like the the, the uh, a time of like peace and well-being <laughs> you know I, mean, I, just, I just feel amazing so. <laughs> That's a good call because that's like bling bling. Every notification yeah. is popping up. up so to give you, I don't know why. Like, it's like it's, it's right. The first thing I do. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh man. So now, if you could improve two areas in your life, what would they be? life. <laughs> Two areas. What would they be? I think. Um, whew, that's really hard. <laughs> it's, I know. Uh, I know. <laughs> I, okay, I guess. Don't overthink yeah, it. They, it could be a simple thing. Yeah. Okay. I, I guess my first thing comes to is somehow just time, like having a more, more time to do, uh, just to, to, I don't know, to live. I guess. Yeah. Um, more downtime, yeah. More downtime. More downtime. The other one would be maybe better, better at at uh, personal 
relationships with people. You know, it's always, mm. it's always, it's be nicer to like be, learn to be better to people and, and yeah. therefore getting that back as well. Yeah. 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 Man. Okay. Okay. Now what's next for you and Tamago house? Um, now did, so is it strictly just your blog and newsletter right now? That's basically it. Yeah. There, there is no business okay. plan with Tamago house or anything like that. And do you find it is has it been beneficial having that newsletter? Like, what are some of the benefits? Because I'm I started one, mm -hmm. um, and slowly, you know, I know it takes time. I'm not trying to have this thing kind of blow up in overnight. I don't expect yeah. it to, but I'm trying to figure out. I mean, you've had this one. What has been some of the benefits of having this new letter, and how has it worked for you? I mean, the, the, I mean, the one of the easy benefits is that it's a little bit of income depending on what platform mm -hmm. you're using it's not a lot it, it, it but right. it covers the cost of, of hosting it and uh, um and I know if you were to read the the advertisements like oh this is a great way to generate uh you know passive income for your for your right whatever it is you, you're pursuing the other thing is uh you know i think the benefit it's for, for me with the blog is that it's it's a little bit more honest than social. It's a lot more honest than social media. It's not gamified. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the, the, the scale of it is much smaller. So the reason I started for it was that I, a couple of years ago, I put on a landing page for Oscar Zahn, sign up here for my mailing list, which I never wrote or updated. And then I checked mm. on it like late last year and like 800 people had signed up. Um, wow. And I was like, oh my God, like it's, I should probably do something with this, right? Because 800 people yeah. cared enough to give me their email addresses. Right. So I, I started this thing and it's just sort of a way to, um, to, I guess, connect with people yeah. that might be interested in the stuff I do in a much, yeah. in a hopefully more meaningful way. Like I'm not, you don't have to click the like button. You don't have to, um, buy anything even i'm not gonna dance for you you know we don't right, need a million right, followers right. but just that you know you give me your email address and by the metrics 50 percent of you open it and read it so so right. that 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 right. matters a lot more than somebody scrolling by and just mindlessly clicking like i guess right. so i think the benefits are more subtle but maybe longer lasting and it's pretty new for me yeah. still so I, I don't know it's only been four months yeah Wow. Yeah, because it's it's long term, but I think it definitely has its upsides. And that's why I looked at also starting the one that I've started. Yeah. And it's just more for me. For me, it's more of an outlet as well, just because I, I share a lot of poetry yes. on there. Yeah. And, and so it's yeah. So I have my moody Mondays and that's what I put out on Mondays. And then Wednesdays is like a, a short little piece where I try to just poke fun at certain things that we take too seriously yeah, I'm sometimes, sign up to right? That. Actually, I didn't realize you had your newsletter, so you have a new subscriber. Yeah, it, 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 mind, mind you, yours is four months, mine is probably like two months. Uh, like, it's 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 well, fairly new uh, as well, can right? I ask what what uh, platform you're using? I'm using um, Substack. Okay. Yeah, Substack. I was looking into that too. And so, okay. yeah, so it, it's pretty simple, straightforward for me to use. That's why yeah. I jumped on it, and, and it seems to be helping yeah. out. So we'll see how it yeah. goes, you know. Now... What's next for you in the next couple of years? Like, what can we expect from Try in the next couple of years as far as either books, stories, um, web, yeah. comics, anything uh, that you're thinking um, or working on? For the next couple of years, I, I'm still focused primarily on books, comic books, uh, graphic novels. Mm -hmm. I have a, a, what can I, which one can I, I don't think I can actually officially say, say what they are yet. But uh, no. I have about oh. two or three uh, in the works oh, right nice. now, uh, maybe some more. Uh, I'd like to, nice. because all the published stuff that, that's out as book format were, are like Everyday Hero Machine Boy, Lego Ninjago, mm -hmm. they're geared towards the young audience. I'd like to yeah. branch out from that and, and mm -hmm. do something a little bit uh, more mature. Um, mm -hmm. And then... Yeah, I guess I'll see where I go. I actually wouldn't. The other day I was thinking, like, once I get this comic, all this comic stuff done, part of me wonders, like, is maybe there'd be another medium 
I'd like to mm. dabble in. I'm not sure what they would be right now, but uh, yeah, give it a shot. Explore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's not bad. Now, could you share an important life lesson that you have learned recently? Can it can it be one from a couple years ago? Okay. Sure. Um, I mean, it's, it sounds really trite, I guess, but I think it's just like, uh, be yourself. Like it, uh, mm. uh, actually, it's, it's, at least when it pertains to art and creativity, I think uh, I didn't, I didn't uh, find an audience. I didn't, uh, I didn't find it. I had to just do something for myself without worrying about mm -hmm. what people thought about me, without worrying about, uh, you know, pleasing some kind of standard. I just had to try to mm -hmm. do something that was important to me, express myself. And then, and well, actually, and actually also what, oh, the only people that matters, the same opinion that matters is yourself and the people that enjoy your work. And yep. it's a, yep. it's a personal connection in a way. So, if you can reduce the number of middlemen between those as much as you can, that's probably, um, you probably find yourself creating more meaningful and personal work for you. Thank you for that, because I think that's critical, especially in this climate that we're yeah. living in, where everybody's looking externally for affirmations. Yeah. Right. Am I good enough? Yes. Um, can I do this thing? Right. And and we're looking for the likes. We're looking for the heart. We're yeah. For this and the commentary. And so you lose sight of what it is that you were actually yeah. enjoying. So, this, and, this, so, okay, here's <laughs> another, this is a much more recent one kind of going on with that is that, and, and cause something to do with Tamago house was that I had this sort of epiphany, uh, last year where, um, mm -hmm. I wasn't feeling very good about myself. <laughs> like in terms of my career, I was like, am I ever going to go anywhere with this or, but yeah. on one end, it's like, it doesn't really make sense. I like the feelings that I have inside doesn't really feel, doesn't match the outside. But on the other hand, I also yeah. feel like the, the, our perspective is so skewed now, especially with the internet and social media, where yep. uh, I, I looked, I looked up some stats, like Oscar Zahn was viewed like 16 million times. And I don't, and I feel terrible <laughs> about myself, you know, like, why can't I feel good about that? And it's, I feel like it's like we feel like we need to hit some huge numbers, but maybe if I could just, I keep on saying like if I could, if, if my art career was the equivalent of being that kind of like cozy, popular coffee shop around the corner, I think I'd be pretty happy, yeah, you know, yeah. like you know, yeah, I'm doing a thing yeah. I like, I see the people I like, and it's a pleasant time, and I yeah. think I think that's that's good enough, I think. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're stuck in that dope, dopamine uh, thing where it's like it's never yeah. enough. We want more. We want this person to say that you're good. We want that person to say yeah. you're good. And we're looking for you're that. Looking for that metric. It never comes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, and, and when it doesn't come, you beat yourself up, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. And it's, it, 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 uh, it's, it's not an accurate signifier of how well you're doing. No, yeah. no. Now, how can others get a copy of your book? Um, and support any initiatives that you're doing? What's the best way to reach you? You mentioned the newsletter. Um, do you mind kind of sharing that, uh, how they can get connected to that, what website or your social media handle so they can get connected to yeah, you? Yeah, I keep it pretty lean. There's my newsletter, which is probably the the, the place, place I prefer people to, to find me. Uh, so that's at tomagohouse.com. That's T-O-M-A-G-O house.com and then i have an instagram and my handle is, is at, at tribong i try to answer whatever messages i have uh and as for the books um you can get them on m i don't have an e-store or anything like that yet so but you can find everyday hero machine boy on amazon and you can find lego ninjago on amazon and um and other future books <laughs> probably on amazon i Perfect. guess yeah Perfect. Now, before I let you go, my last question for the night is, how would you want to be remembered and why? Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't really have any preference to be remembered by people I don't know. <laughs> I hope you, like people that I met, like you, I hope you yeah. think back of, uh, uh, well, other than the 
Oh, you know what? I'm glad you remembered lecturing me about school. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, I hope to be remembered at least amusingly by people that you know in my personal life, and and that way you have more good memories than bad. Uh, yeah, and yeah. and that goes and that goes also to like quote unquote fans I've met at conventions. I I always had positive experiences uh, meeting uh, people. I love just chatting with them in general. So. Um, that's sort of it. I don't really have, have any other than nice. Yeah. Well, you know what? You got a body of work that you're leaving behind anyway. So people are going to remember you for that as well. Um, and to your benefit, I don't think that you're still that person. I never thought you were going to say that person that obviously I knew in, in Seneca because as I followed over the years, I realized he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah in my eyes Interesting. right yeah. um and 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 what i mean by that is creating right because you could easily have been stuck in that time um you know that time warp of just starting something but not finishing mm. yeah okay because we get i get stuck in there i used to be in there for a while for many years where you start something but you never finish yeah. and then you kind of have this moment where it's like wait a minute what's stopping me from finishing so it? question for you are you at the point now mm -hmm. where uh have you gone through to the others? Because I like to put, I had that problem. I couldn't start anything. Then when I started things, I could not finish anything. Now I can finish things. Now, but now I'm wondering, like, do I have to fit? Like, if I'm, if it's, like, do I have to be that guy that finishes everything? No, you don't. But are you able to? Yeah. Right. I think that's the question. That if I'm able to answer, then I'm at peace okay. with everything. Yeah. Right. But if I'm not able to answer it, then it's like, wait a minute, what's causing me, you know, to not be able to finish. Yeah. Right. And so and that's really what it was, because I had a lot of little projects that I never finished. <laughs> right. And and so I actually set a deadline. So I I, I produced a children's book and that was inspired of my my daughter when she was oh. five. She's seven now, but when she was five. And so I said to myself, how am I going to finish this? And I have a full time job. I got to watch, you know, take care of my family and, and spend time with my kids. Yeah. And so what I did was I started in January, um, I think it was 2019. And I said, you know what? I'm going to finish this by October. Yeah. October 31st, I need this book to be finished where all I have to do is click print, yeah. right? For somebody to, you know, get it printed. And so every day what I did was in order for me to meet that deadline, I, I gave myself two hours a day. Realistically, it was really like an hour and a yeah. half or an hour if I could get it in, right? But that hour needed to be so efficient that it can make up for two yeah. days that I take off. Yeah. Right. And so that's all I did. And then, so I put in, I got to wake up at 4 AM for work, but Amazing. I'm here doing this thing. Right. And you just got to do it. And so when I finished it, I finished it by, it was August. And I said, wait a minute, I'm done. Yeah. And October is two months away. Amazing. So what do I do at this time? Yeah. Right. And so then it was more, okay, let me go back and fine tune the parts that I don't like. Right. And then and then I, you know, tweaked the art here and there. And it was an author. Oh, my gosh. I think is um, I got to get his name for you. But he wrote a book and I read that book. And that's what really pushed me over. It was finish. Um, it was just ship. I think the book is called just okay. ship. It was a marketing book. Something golden. I can't remember his first name. Something golden. But he basically said, well, if you're creating something, if you're an artist and you're creating something, your objective is to get it to yes. the people that you want to see this yeah. thing. Yeah. Right? It's not about you, but we made it about yes. ourselves. Yes, it has got it's so little always been about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? And it has nothing to do yeah. with us. And so his message was just finish and ship it. Yeah. Don't care about what they think or any. Let them criticize. And guess what? That's free survey. That's them giving you feedback yeah. on how you can improve on yeah. that thing. And then he's like, you know what you can do next? Make a second edition with the improvements and sell it back to them. Right? That's it. Yeah. Right? But I never thought about it that yeah. way. I was like, wait a minute. It's true. What am I hoarding this thing for? And that's what we do as artists, right? Because we get so attached to yeah. it. And we never want to let it go. It's not perfect. I got to change this. got to change that. No, just ship it. Let them criticize it. And then based on that information, you can give it to them again. Yeah. If they're criticizing, they're interested. Yeah. 
right? And so that's the mentality that I had to make a shift and then yeah, I put that book out and, and that was it. Yeah, I remember yeah. hearing something very similar that there's really, and I actually fully agree with this, like how do you make it in freelance or art or whatever, right? It's just like, I guess yeah. is one is just do the best work you can, show it to people. That's it. And it has to be yeah. both. You can't, that's yeah, it. it has to be both. You can't just do one or the that's other, it. but you have to do, yeah. That's it. Yeah, and that's it. It's been so that's it i want to thank you i want to thank you for this um i appreciate you and it was this a is blast. a pleasure i'm so glad lot. you reached out uh and yeah anytime <laughs> you want to chat again we're on or off air just let's yes. Uh, reconnect yes yeah. yes well but until next episode love peace and nappiness <laughs>